So you start putting together this little piece after piece after piece after piece, and before you know it, not overnight, but over time, you become successful. I had this banner ad on my site, and I'd kind of forgotten it was there. Initially, I put this up when I started the members area, and you would get an automated email once you submit a problem telling you that in the next Q&A webinar, I would take care, hopefully take care of that problem, or I'll give you some solutions for the problem, some uh, plausible solutions. Anyway, what happened since is I had started the Facebook group, and that all but eliminated the need for a Q&A session. I'm not opposed to doing sessions, but if you guys have questions, you ask it. And uh, most of you guys in the group are kind enough and smart enough to be able to, by the time I get around to answer the question, they've already answered it for me because they know the methodology, which is very flattering and exciting. But anyway, uh, I recently found some questions, and there was one in particular. Uh, from this banner ad, and I need to adjust that so future questions will be covered in the week of charts, which this is the week of charts now, just in case you're watching a recording of this. Unless I did a quick clip, but the quick clips come from the week of charts for what it's worth. I trade with the trend, but most often I take profits way too quick and leave a lot of money on the table. Then I wait for a pullback to buy in again, only to watch the stock go down almost to my stop. I only use mental stops usually, then rebound, go up, and after a few dollars, take the profit. It seems like I feel anxious about staying with the market, especially more so lately. Well, lately is an exception. Lately has been pretty bumpy, and that's that's one of the things – that you're just going to have to get your reps in. And I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. But part of those reps is living through a variety of conditions, good conditions where you're printing money, bad conditions where you have sharp reversals, choppy conditions where you can't find a setup to save your life, and then something in between. I think it was Brian Gelber, I believe, that once said, three months out of the year, you're so hot, you can't sleep at night because you're so hot. Three months out of the year, you're so cold, and you wonder whether you ever make money again. And then the other six months, you're making a little, uh, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, and just grind it out. That that pretty much sums it up. Now, in answering this gentleman, I said, the fix is not hard. It's not easy, but it's far from hard. First, you have to want to fix the problem and be willing to do what has to be done. And in this case, this gentleman's name is Bernie. It sounds like he is. And I just kind of threw this in there because I find it kind of interesting. I've had people email me literally for over two decades. There's at least two people in particular still email me to this day. Uh, although I've become a little bit more tough love in more recent times because both of these individuals have wasted 20 years of their lives trying to learn how to trade when all they had to do, I know, easier said than done, but all they had to do is do the simple things that I'm, going to talk about tonight or go back to go back 20 years ago and do what I said back then and I'm pretty sure I said be selective trade one pattern till you become successful trade a small size and a few of the other things that we talk about right now now the number one thing that I told this gentleman was if you can't follow the plan get smaller until you can so you want to trade at a small enough size to where it's small enough to where it doesn't stress you out. And if you still can't follow the plan, you want to get smaller even still. And you have to reach a point where you're trading at a size that is nearly meaningless. I've, I've known a couple of people who have been sort of part of the industry but kind of more on the periphery, and, and if that's the right word, and not necessarily traders. And they, they're exposed to a lot of traders and a lot of traders' education. And in both cases that, that come to mind, both of these gentlemen did fairly well early on. And in one case, I, I said, I'm very, I'm very impressed. Usually people don't do this well this quickly. And he says, well, hang on, Dave. I am just – I'm trading at such a tiny size. It's, it's barely – it's nearly ridiculous. And then that made sense. So he's able to get the reps in, get the psychology down place the orders, and so on and so forth. Now, again, trading is about getting the reps in. And if you're not following the plan because you're stressed out, 
you're not getting the reps in. You need to hold a position like that ULS I just showed and just ride out all those bumps. I mean, take props along the way, of course, and trail that stop higher, but then just let that position go day after day after day. Doesn't happen often, but every now and then, we'll be in a position that we've established months and sometimes years ago and written out longer term trends. I've seen this before written out and it, it's just not, it's not directly to trading, but it does apply. A bad plan followed well is better than a good plan ignored. Now, obviously you don't wanna keep following a bad plan, okay? But you, you still wanna work towards better planning, don't get me wrong, but you have to reach a point where you could actually follow a plan. Now, I'm not a huge fan of mechanical trading, but maybe when you're getting getting started, maybe do a little bit of mechanical trading and just follow the system to a T, good, bad, and indifferent. Now, of course, you need to be selective. And I think this was number 77,310, if memory serves, of the million little things was just take only F, yeah, trades. So if you're feeling F, yeah, and you should know that feeling if you've been trading for a while. You should see a setup and your pulse should quicken a little bit. You should get excited. Maybe you're, you, uh, you know, you just can't wait to put the trade on. Now, of course, as I beat the dead horse on, and this comes from Ed Dakota, you have to be careful with into wishing versus intuition. But if you've been doing this for a while, and believe me, that's one thing that I recommend you do, obviously, is your due diligence, okay? Find one little simple setup, something like, let's say, Landry Light pullbacks to the 30 EMA. Study those, find 100 examples, find 30 of those 100 that fail miserably, find 30 that did okay, and then find 30 that did fantastic, and then find another 10 while you're at it. <laughs> Some of the math will add up. But you definitely want to reach a point where you see a setup and you're excited about it. And of course, if it fails miserably, then you do your postmortem and you say, okay, was everything there to begin with or was this a setup mirage? And that's something that I've, that's, I'm working on too. It's like you, you have a, everything so clearly in hindsight, but there is a foresight in that hindsight a lot of times. It's kind of like you take a trade. And you're like, ah, I probably should have taken this trade. It's like all of a sudden you see everything clearly. And I'm not talking about when you're stopped out, like like five minutes after you get in, then you're like, oh, wait a minute. The, the trend wasn't that great. It wasn't a, it wasn't an awesome setup and, and all these other things. Now, if you're feeling kind of meh, don't take the trade. So, and this is the tough part. It's that forced intuition or that intuition, like I just said, from Ed Sakota. You got to be really cognizant of that. When I'm in a zone and when I'm on fire, I'm on fire. It's amazing. But sometimes I try to force that to happen, especially like I'm doing something intraday. Now, with the, with the longer term trading, I'm a little bit more calm and I'm able to ride it out. And, and believe me, having clients has really helped me do that because I put out a plan for them, which is the same plan that I'm going to follow. And that tends to work over time fairly well now you know in any ind individual trade it could be an independent outcome and who knows whether it's gonna work or not but i know going into a trade if i recommend it especially in more recent times maybe over the last five years or so i'm trying to get the best of the best setups out there to a point where a lot of times i will recommend any setups and i'll lose clients because a lot of times clients are looking for action they're not looking to make money and learn how to trade now I'm not the grand poopah, but if you want to see what I think is an FES setup, like I said, especially more recent times over the last five years or so, where I feel like I'm becoming more and more selective and maybe my stock selection has become a little better and I've learned that less is more, but go in and look at the archives, daily.com slash archives. And we'll go, with, we'll go through a few of the, I think it was three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I went through like the last five or six trades that closed out. So you can go back in and watch those week watch that week of charts. But when you're looking at these setups, you should see some combination of persistency, acceleration, ability for the stock to trade cleanly, uh, pullback, if you're trading a pullback in and of itself, that's deep enough, but not too, too extreme. 
and all these things that I preach. And you probably want to think three times before putting capital into harm's way. I forget the Latin for it, prenum non cheri or something like that. Uh, first, do no harm. So take the doctor's creed. You want to first do no harm to your account. Now, unless you have the mother of all setups, like sometimes I'll see a setup, it's F, yeah. And maybe the setup's not trending fantastic or fantastically, I guess is what I should say. Maybe the market trend is really not there, but I really, really, really like the setup. Well, when you see a setup that you really like, take it, okay? And you kind of have to weigh, is your is your regret, is your fail, the failed miserably test I talk about quite often. I think that was one of the million little things. So ask yourself, if this trade failed miserably, could you live with yourself, okay? And if the answer is no, then maybe you shouldn't take the trade. But ideally, not just an FES setup, but an FES setup where the sector's backing you and the overall market is backing you. And if you look at those two shorts I have recommended, if you look at the representative sectors, they've begun to roll over and looks like at the least they're topping out and could be in trouble. Now, by having the market behind you and the sector behind you, it does put a little wind in your sails. And sometimes that in and of itself, uh, let's say if it's 1999, even if you got a little sloppy or you're stock picking, stock picking, if the market is just going straight up, then you'll likely do pretty good anyway. Now, again, go look at my archives because it's free and it's a great exercise if you're willing to do it. And and Study success and failure. So everything is there, warts and all. And, and believe me, there's a, there's a lot of ugly trades in here too. And there's occasional big, huge winner, which makes it all worthwhile. And a couple of uh, grinding it out where you hit the IPT to scratch out. So I'm going to go through these fairly quickly because we talked about them a few weeks ago. But in this case, this stock was in a strong uptrend, had a nice deep pullback. And those are all the parameters as far as the entry the stop and the initial profit target now what i liked about this setup was it was an accelerating trend in fact it was kind of like in third gear one two three and i think there's something there i've never really fleshed it out fully but the accelerating momentum strategy you just need a market to be in an uptrend and then have that uptrend take off and then you look to play the first correction but also if you notice the persistency was there in this particular stock. And that means it tends to go up day after day after day. In fact, I had watched the stock go up day after day after day. And I was thinking, of course, oh, I wish I was in that stock because it's going up every day. But because it didn't fit my methodology, except for maybe a momentum list, which I'll touch upon in one second, there was no reason for me to buy it. And I had to wait for a setup. And when it finally set up, I felt like this trade would, would work. In fact, I would be more shocked if it didn't work, then if it did, it it tell you it did it did give me a, a run for my money. It scared me quite a bit. And by the way, in this particular case, we were able to get out. The opening was uh, had exceeded the IPT, so that made the exit a little bit better. Here's another one. This was an IPO. This trend pivot pullback. Entry was here. Stop was down here, and the IPT was up here. And this was a hot IPO. First deeper trace, but trend pivot pullback. And Let's see. We'll come back to that one in one second. This is K and F, uh, another IPO, nice deep retracement. It took off, kind of went straight up, and then it just had a nice orderly correction on the way down. SVM, another one, trend acceleration. Okay. And that's that's it's pretty amazing for a silver stock. Usually silver stocks are, are a lot more choppier than this, but for a silver stock, I was very impressed. And again, we have acceleration, we have persistency, and we have a fairly deep pullback to knock some people out. Also a TKO type of move in there. 